Good morning. Welcome to Ricarte's Crossing. I'm Paula. Welcome if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. We're continuing with the um, book, Who Were You? This is all about resurrection, all about reincarnation. Um, these are some thoughts and ideas that I'm reading from the book. There's no, I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't believe. This is about your own beliefs. I want to make it very, very clear. This is just some suggestions, some ideas, some thoughts um, that's going to enable you to reflect, contemplate, meditate on, um, maybe some questions that you can ask for yourself. Um, these are just some ideas. We're going to go back and have a look at miracles and resurrection today. But what I want to do is begin with a reading. So the reading's going to begin with the um, animal wisdom cards. You can see Oh, I'm not too sure about the, um, might have to close the um, blinds, I think. See if I can close the blinds and see if that's going to make a difference to the cards. Sort of the light reflects quite strongly on that. I'll just bring that down a little bit. Let's try that. See if that's going to make a difference without the light shining through. So here we have the divine, uh, the animal wisdom tarot, and I'm actually going to use them in conjunction with the um, chakra wisdom tarot, animal wisdom, chakra wisdom. Sort of seemed, I don't know, I just felt really drawn to do that today, and also connect with the yin and yang energies of the Chinese oracle. So we'll see. That's also an animal deck. So. Let us begin with the Animal Wisdom Tarot. Let's see, what do we need to reflect on while we're looking at miracles and resurrection? So let's have a look and see what messages do we get. Now I'm just going to go through maybe a little intuitive with the cards. So it will just be what I sort of feel drawn to work with. Okay, so cards are, let's have a look, first card is the dog, okay, which is ten of fossils, but to me this is very much about a sense of um, being quite earthy, so I feel like everything's sort of coming together, there's a lot of loyalty, a lot of love coming through on lots of levels, I think this is an unconditional love as well as everything's sort of coming together. I feel that's very, very important for you to reflect on. As you move through the sense of miracles or things that have been happening to you, maybe you feel like you've resurrected who you truly are on some level, knowing that everything's actually coming together is really, really important. And I've got two of branches here, and two of branches sort of speaks to me of a sense of options available to you, a sense of choices to be made, there's choices to be made that's very important. As things sort of start to come through for you, maybe a sense of creativity, um, maybe a new project or an enterprise on some level, you might look, need to look at it quite deeply and decide in the choices that you actually need to make to find that balance that you need for you. Okay, next we have Nurture of Branches, so I feel it's about your passion, it's definitely about um, nurturing your passion, your creativity, nurturing your creativity on some level, remembering also that you, this may be talking about someone who comes into your life who is there for you, who could be a loyal friend on some level, someone who's going to support you. And the last card we have is the snake, which is the ace of branches. And that to me is about a, is a spark, a spark of energy coming through. And with the snake to me is definitely about wisdom, it's definitely about knowledge, but also being aware of deception on some level. Maybe you feel like you're shedding old skins and coming up new and being able to reach and grow in the direction that you actually want to. You're moving up into new levels of awareness. So I feel for you that on some level as you're going through this journey, 
you may find that everything's sort of coming together. You know these choices that you actually need to make. You need to review and look at the, the choices that you've actually got coming up. It's very much about nurturing your creative projects. As there's definitely a spark of energy coming through as you're shedding old skins and allowing yourself to emerge um, into new potential, which is quite important for you at this time. So I feel like there's very much about creativity. Um, just remembering when everything sort of comes together, making sure you are staying grounded at the same time. So let's look at the Chakra Wisdom cards. And I'm going to look at these a little differently. I'm not actually um, using the book today. I'm just going to see what message I get personally um, in regards to this for the you and what's coming through. So let's have a look about flying across the room so let me just grab there's a big bundle here okay so let's have a look one two three four five it's only six cards i thought it was more than that they always look quite thick these cards so let's have a look what have we actually got coming through okay we've got the queen of wands interesting because we've got the nurture of branches So I feel this is very much about communication, um, maybe seeing the truth truth of the situation, being able to clearly express, um, being able to nurture your passion, your creativity through speaking could be quite important, through actually seeing the truth of the situation. Card number two is five of cups. Okay, knowing things are not so bad. So this is more about the third, um, more about the third eye, and this is to me that's more about the third eye. So this is more about seeing, seeing the truth of the situation as you nurture your um, journey. I feel it's a lot about this opening up your psych, your abilities. You're nurturing your abilities on some level, and this five of cups is about communication, being able to express your sense of thoughts your you know being able to communicate what what you're carrying within you is very important and knowing that things aren't as bad as they seem maybe trying to change your perspective in um in what and how you speak could be quite important change your perspective on what you focus on here we've got the sense of divine awareness and this is about the transformation coming through spiritually so I feel like you you are coming through and new levels of awareness as you transform as things finish and you make the changes that you actually need so again I get that sense of endings you had the ten of um, fossils which is like ten of um, pentacles ten of earth which is about to me is about riches richness riches um, entering all areas of your life about things that are coming together again you've got that with the death as things end you've got um, you're moving through new changes and things like that happening here you've got the lovers again you've got the choices I feel like there's a lot of choices coming on because you had the um, two of branches in the um, animal wisdom and here you've got the lovers which is about choices as well so I think choices are coming through quite strongly as you're getting that sense of seeing the truth of the situation, being able to actually look at the messages that are actually coming through for you on many levels. Here you've got the king of coins. Again, you've got a sense of being practical, being logical as you move ahead. There's definitely some business opportunities coming your way. Maybe you feel like you've got some um, a new enterprise or a new business opportunity that's coming your way and when I'm talking about business opportunity I don't necessarily mean a physical business it could be a sense of something that feels like it is your abilities your your project at this time and here you've got seven of swords so we've got very much about your divine awareness so this is taking it quite deep in regards to your spirituality your faith your belief and where you're at so you start you're going to take back your power and who you truly are so I feel like you need to sort of really stand in your power spiritually 
on quite a deep level, being able to self-express and being able to see the truth of the situation and what's actually going on for you personally. That's where you've got to look at what's happening for you personally that's very, very important for you at this time. Okay, so here we're going to look at the yin energies. Okay, so the receptive. Being receptive at this time. So being receptive, you're going to focus on the goat energy, which is about being positive, having a positive attitude. Um, try not to focus too much on the negative aspects of your life. Trying to focus on the half full, not the half empty. Um, focus on what's standing up right, not what's tipped over. I think that's coming through quite strongly here. I think it's quite important to acknowledge the um, negative aspects or um, acknowledge that the cups have tipped over and pick them, pick them back up or acknowledge that um, the cups are not quite half full and so you just need to top them up, you know, focus at the half empty and go, oh, I need to top them up or fill them up or whatever you need to do for you. So I think this goat energy is very important in, in the yin energies okay the goat with the yin okay being receptive being receptive in your own attitude and how you deal with what's actually going on so let's look at the action needing to be taken the um, masculine energy about being practical maybe being logical in some way being that sort of um, what action do you actually need to take at this time and it could be here and wow, we've got goat again as well. So goat energy in both the yin and yang energies. And so this is about being confident in your action you're actually taking. So interesting. You can see they're exactly the same cards except one's, one is yin, one's yang. Okay. So there you have a real balance in regards to your yin and yang energy at this time. It's about working with goat energy in um, being receptive and being active, which is quite important. So being um, being receptive about being positive, you know, and acknowledging the um, aspects that you try to deny as well, which is quite important. So you might need to acknowledge those things that you deny in regards to your attitude. And remember also to be confident in your um, actions that you actually take. Very, very important. Wow, what an interesting reading. You can see how the cards reconfirm, reconfirm, reconfirm as we go through the different decks, which I think is absolutely amazing. I just don't want to get these too close to candles and incense and things like that. Certainly don't want to burn the cards. So there we have the um, tarot animal wisdom, the chakra wisdom tarot, plus the Chinese oracle, the yin and yang Chinese oracle cards. And I love that how that sort of confirms the, especially the five of cup card. These two are really focused on those five of cups, which I think is quite important, which is, which is amazing. And you've got the lovers from here, which is very much confirming with the two of branches in regards to sort of choices. Here you have sort of um, sense of uh, transformation and changes or things ending and I think that's very much with the ten of fossils. So you look at those two cards together and I get a sense of as things actually come together know that there's actually some transformations taking place as other things end and it allows us to open up to new possibilities which I think is very much the ace of branches which is quite interesting now this is very interesting we had both the queen of wands and the nurture of branches which is really double double so you double your fire of course with your um with both being wands creativity so I feel like there's a lot about nurturing your your um, creative energy but it's also about remembering about being a loyal friend so maybe that's something you can reflect on maybe there is a friend who's been very very loyal to you and being very supportive and that's sort of coming through in regards to who you were in the past so lots and lots of these cards sort of reconfirm 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 
and um, connect on so many different levels. And I love that. I love the way the decks um, connect um, when we bring them together. And I think they work really, really well together. And I think they um, are amazing. You know, the chakra wisdom and the animal wisdom. I think they, I just, I don't know why, but I just think they just look, colours look amazing. Um, just the whole energy is very connected. So anyway, let us connect again with miracles and resurrection. Because time is moving quite quickly. I don't want to go in um, for too long because I know that it can get quite um, a lot of information. So a miracle is a marvellous, wonderful and remarkable occurrence brought about by some unseen supernatural agency or more usually by a holy person or a person gifted with a special power such as healing by the laying on of hands. Miracles are quite distinct from magic, which was said to be practiced by witches, wizards, sorcerers and spellbinders. Members of the modern and exclusive magic circle are generally entertainers who are skilled in the art of illusion. The Christian religion. So here we're looking at some. Okay, so we're just looking at a little bit of Christian religion. Miracles have occurred throughout the history of many religions, especially in Christian history. In the Middle Ages, miracle plays were performed in Europe, which dramatized the life of Jesus. The Christian faith itself was founded upon a marvelous event known as the Virgin Birth. And in some Christian sects, Mary, the Virgin Mother of Jesus, Christ is afforded as much prominence as Christ himself. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the story. What is the female virginity? A virgin is a woman whose hymen is intact, which infers that sexual intercourse has not yet taken place. The word virgin has appeared in many ancient languages, meaning pure, temperate, and yet as yet untested. Hence, impurity has been connected with sex. Perhaps the story of the virgin birth has been a very has been a way of comp compensating for, for human sexual guilt, or perhaps the conception of Christ was indeed a mystery performed by the hand of God which we are unable to understand. On the other hand, a, path, a pathogenesis, reproduction without fertilization, is a biological philosophy, a possibility being the normal reproductive process in many invertebrates. What you believe, understand or, or accept is very personal to you. How do you approach mysteries? Do you explain them away or try to ignore them? Like the lady and the plug. When electricity first became available for domestic use, an old lady eagerly had this new invention installed in her house. However, she was alarmed when a friend pulled out a plug to take a lamp to a different part of the house. The old lady quickly pushed the plug back into its socket to prevent the electricity from spilling out all over the floor and being wasted. She couldn't understand electricity, so she explained it away by comparing it to the gas supply, with which she was already familiar. Many people approach miracles in a similar way. Okay, here are some of the classic miracle stories from the Bible. References are given with each miracle. Let us assume they all happened as related, regardless of your religious persuasion. Ask yourself some questions. I'm not going to go into too much detail about each of the stories. Um, if you want me to go into more, I'll do another video on that. But I feel like this is going to... There's just lots of things. So, but all I want to do is, regardless of your religious persuasion, just to ask yourself some questions such as, can I understand them without drawing parallels with things that are familiar to me? Do I accept any of them without question? Have I ever hoped or prayed for a miracle? Would I like to believe in miracles? Have I ever witnessed any kind of miracle? Am I capable of creating a miracle? And the miracles that they talk about is the rod of Moses, which is Exodus 4, healing at Capernaum, and Matthew 9, feeding the 5,000, Matthew 14, verses 15 to 21, and the resurrection, Mark 16. Okay, now we talked about how do we know we're alive, we talked about that last week, and we're continuing with how do we know we are alive states of consciousness. Many people would argue that, that your aliveness as a human being depends not only on your energy level and mood, but also on your state of awareness. 
How conscious you are of what is going on around you and what is going on inside yourself. The psychologist Dr. Sigmund Freud was the first to de define states of consciousness as unconsciousness as parts of the personality and Carl Gustav Jung suggested that we all share a collective unconscious. The ancient Indian cult of Tantra maintains that we have a subtle body of which we, bec we can become aware by learning to focus on each of the seven points on the body known as the chakras. The idea has subsequently been developed by Buddhist, Hindus, Jans. Some modern psychologists, such as the late Wilhelm Reich, relate our level of awareness to the release of the muscular tensions, which happens to be the same area as the chakras. We have some models here. The first one is with the key, a super ego for A, B ego, and C ID. Okay, so let's have a look. Freud's model of the personality. The super ego is moral standards acquired from parents, etc. Ego is the rational, practical part of your personality that defends against unwelcome material in the unconscious. To become conscious, you have to drop these defences. ID, your hidden drives, impulses and instincts. The clear areas represent consciousness. The shaded areas represent unconsciousness. The darker the shading, the harder it is to gain access to the part of your personality. So I don't know if you can see that um, first one here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the second. Um, where are we? Here. Which I hope you can see. Okay, here we go. This one here, right? So here we're going into D being persona, E shadow, F ego, G personal unconscious, H collective unconscious, anima and animus. So let's have a look. So we look at here, we've got D, E, F, G and H. Okay, can you see that? Okay. Just want you to be very aware of that. There. Okay, so Jung's model of the personality. Persona, okay, which was the D part, the mask, the self we present to the world. E, which is your shadow, the dark side of our personality that splits the mask from the real self. To attain completeness, we have to pass through our own shadow. Okay, so we've got F as ego, which is the real self. Then you've got personal unconscious, the part of the ego that consists of personal memories right back to conception. Then you've got the collective, right, the unconscious and the anima and animus. So you've got the collective unconscious, which is memories in common with all people because of the structural patterning of the brain that reach consciousness only as symbols, myths and dream because they have to pass through our personal unconscious. Anima and animus, the spirit of the female within men and the male within women, according to Jung, romantic love is our search for our own soul spirit. Next we've got the chakras, which you, the chakras are the subtle body. The tantric view is that awareness of each chakra from one to seven allows the kundalini life force to flow through the body freely and brings total consciousness and alignment. So we start with the root chakra at the base, right, and it moves through. So your root chakra is your primitive survival. Your splenic chakra is your sexual drive. Your navel is your raw emotion. Your heart is your love and affection. Your um, throat is your communication. Third eye is power of mind. Crown chakra. And there we are.